Um, <laughs> let's talk about something more exalted, though, than him. But we'll definitely talk about him in the future, particularly as this book comes together. Um, I would love to do that. What's happening in the Sudan right now? Yeah, so there are a lot of shifts every single day. But at this moment, there was supposed to be a transitional council that was supposed to be military and civilian, but the civilians do not trust the direction that the military has taken it in. And so they've called for an all-out um, transitional civilian uh, council. So backing up to this, um, a couple of weeks ago, Omar al-Bashir was ousted by the military. And the military, thinking that was going to repeat the playbook that had happened in most Arab countries, you know, Sudan is Arabized. Mm -hmm. I would call it an African country, but it had been Arabized. Um, they thought that they can win the favor of people by ousting Omar al-Bashir and maintaining the same structure that it had and maintaining the same political elites that had existed and exploited people. Um, and the people don't want that. So the people are savvy enough. You know, we're in a post-2011, post-quote-unquote Arab Spring, or what more people tend to call it, um, dignity revolution moment. And people saw that they had to call for more than just the ousting of a leader. They needed the whole, an entire uprooting of an unequal social order that had existed prior to the regime that they have a problem with, that has been incredibly corrupt, you know, same story in Algeria, you know, but they just had two different breaking points. And for Sudanese people, it started out in December 2018. There had been years of protests against this government, even when it was violently repressed and put down. But in December 2018, in the outskirts, a city called Atbara, there were protests against the tripling price of bread and the incredibly long lines for bread, for fuel, um, limited cash flow, and then it ended up spreading to Khartoum. And that's when there was a little bit more international attention. But they've been consistently on the front lines calling for a uprooting of this regime that came into power in 1989, but the whole military apparatus and for civilian rule. They see what happened in Egypt and they're like really savvy about it. I just wanted to, I mean, that's what you said, but I just wanted to like bumper sticker it. Um, what, what is the, yeah, cause it, yeah please go ahead. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I just want to go back because I think people either don't know or don't remember the play out of things, which is that, the Egyptian revolution was January 2011, actually pretty soon after Mubarak, who had ruled for decades, resigned. Well, he was ousted by the military. And then they had general elections and the Muslim Brotherhood won. And, you know, for there were there were some massacres that happened, um, a pretty large one, in fact. But during this time, people had resisted that regime because they saw, they saw it as incompetent. Things weren't changing economically, socially for them. And unfortunately, the Muslim Brotherhood did get elected democratically. And then the military came in and deposed Muhammad Mursi, who was the president and has been ruling ever since. And that's uh, SCC, who um, was one of the first to call Trump when Trump was elected, congratulating him. LCC so, very tight with Trump and also uh, in the past, I don't know currently, but I know had uh, at least received some consulting advice from people around Tony Blair. So this is like that kind of person. Um, what? Yeah. What is, can you talk and maybe, and now you could, you know, please start to bridge to Algeria so we can talk about Algeria as well. But I'm really interested in, you talked about the bread price and austerity. What's like the labor union dimension of all this unrest? First thing I should say is I am not an expert on Sudan or Algeria, and I can point you to so many people who are, but what I have been studying, um, as you know, because I, I sent you the book that I worked on that came out in 2012, is social movements, 
youth involvement and uprisings right. across the quote unquote Middle East, uh, North Africa. Um, so what was happening is that let's back up a little bit. Um, Sudan was producing oil, but most of that oil came from South Sudan. And that was a big driver of economic stability, even though this government was lining their pockets. Um, but South Sudan, as we know, ended up seceding in 2011. And at that point, the government had really no money to subsist on. And taking the advice of, you know, the notorious IMF, International Monetary Fund, instead of finding other avenues to produce wealth for the country and distribute resources, they introduced austerity measures. Mm-hmm. And that included um, removing subsidies that they had for wheat and uh, electricity. So there were protests against this and people were not watching. There were protests at the same time in 2011 when South Sudan seceded, 2012, 13, um, and then again more recently 2018 because it got to a breaking point. So I don't yeah. know if I answered No, 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 your that's perfect. That's perfect. Necessarily, but there is the organi- one of the organizations that people are pointing to now is the uh, Sudan Professional Association, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is an umbrella of professionals from different sectors. Um, but it is civil society, tends to be a, a little, um, you know, middle class, like doctors, but that's an umbrella, but there's so many other uh, movements and organizing groups that are involved in this movement. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.